Welcome to Modern Musings, Conversations with the Maiden, Mother, and Crone, where we look at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Hello and welcome back to Modern Musings. I'm your hostess, Cindy, and I'm here with Kristen and Amber. Hey! Hello! And um, we are right here on the verge um, of Valentine's Day, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about the greatest love stories. Now, I have long been a fan of epic love stories, and um, not so much the romance novels, and (laughs) Kristen and I have, and Amber, have had discussions about those before, but um, I do love a really good love story, and so... I thought it would be fun to discuss what our favorite love stories are and uh, maybe a little bit about what makes them so appealing and, you know, why are we drawn to them? So I'm going to start off with one of mine. I I have three listed here and um, and I, I'm going to start off with one of them and uh, and then we can just kind of go from there. So. One of the greatest love stories that I remember ever reading in my life was called The Far Pavilions, and it was written by a female author, um, M.M.K., and it's based in India during the British uh, colonial era, and um, it's, it's the character is a British soldier um and he's some he's wound up orphaned and he's raised by a surrogate mother who is indian who um raises him as her own and he eventually falls in love with the daughter of araj and uh, you know there's a lot of tragedy and he you know winds up going back to england and some different things like that but um this story, I don't want to go into it because you might want to read it, but I, I loved this story because it was based in an exotic location. And uh, as with often um, those epic kind of love stories, there's a little bit of tragedy and, um, you know, some things like that. And so it, it just makes the love story part of it all the more poignant because of the struggles that the um, two people have to go through to get there. And, and then, like I said, also because it had such a beautiful setting and she did a great job of telling this story. Um, It's based loosely um, on the story of the author's grandfather. um, And, uh, she wrote it in 1978, but a lot of people compare it because it has a lot of parallels to Rudyard, um, Rudyard Kipling's Kim. And, uh, because of the, the young protagonist, um, being orphaned and raised by a surrogate mother and, you know, some things like that. So, um, MMK, the far pavilions, have either of you ever read that book? Nope. Never even heard of it. It is. Oh, it's. It actually is um, considered a masterpiece of of fiction of 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 writing, and um, I I just I love that story. I I have some others, but I thought I'd um, kind of open it out there and let y'all throw one or two in. Um, maybe some you may have some that are a little more well known that um, um, we can actually talk about the more of the plots and stuff. Well. Um... <laughs> I, I've been sitting here thinking, like, um, I was thinking one, but it's it's such a cliche. Probably one of my f- most favorite romance, this is not the one I was thinking of, but one of my most favorite romance novels is, it was written by an author named Flora Spear, and it's like a 1980s type novel. I found it in a... Um, an old uh, used bookstore in 
Lubbock called the Book Rack. Uh-huh, and uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> while I was in college and I liked it so much, I ordered, you know, back when Amazon was freshly new, like used copies of her other novels because, you know, she doesn't write anymore. She's not alive anymore. But um, as far as I know, I'll have to double check that one. But uh, it was called, uh, it's called Much Ado About Love. Mm. And it is actually a medieval retelling of Much Ado About (laughs) Nothing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I knew you knew (laughs) that I was going to say something Shakespeare. (laughs) And that was... uh, Well, the minute you started saying Much Ado About, I was like, like, oh, yeah, I I remember reading that with you in college. (laughs) Yeah. So, yes, it's uh, a a Shakespeare retelling. Okay. And set in medieval times, medieval England mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, I don't know. It's just uh, it's just very cute. Uh, and I like it much better than the Shakespeare version. Although I do love the Shakespeare version as well. Mm-hmm. It's one of probably not my favorite comedy of his. But one of them, my favorite comedy and my favorite romance specifically of Shakespeare's would be as you like it mm-hmm. because i like those gender bending romances okay plus okay. uh rosalind from as you like it is probably one of shakespeare's um strongest female characters okay okay what about well, you Kristen? um if i'm not mistaken isn't part of much do about nothing a bunch of people meddling in other people's affairs yes yeah, yeah. it's pretty much yeah, i remember that, yeah. reading it but i don't remember what i read <laughs> i just remember that um and actually that is probably um you know thinking back on all of the romance novels that i've read um and i love um watching all those cheesy hallmark movies and stuff <laughs> i think my favorite i don't have like a particular favorite Um, But I like to think of, like, the style of the story, and my favorites are the ones where there's, um, you know, obviously the two people, but there's other forces at play where there's other people that might be giving their opinion. Kind of like Much much Ado About Nothing, yeah. And uh, the parts that I love is whenever they both have strong feelings for each other, but they don't think the other's have that same feeling oh, yeah yeah and so you know it might be a little bit of their self-esteem and they're maybe they're a little bit gullible and they're believing what other people are telling them and maybe uh someone tells uh one of the characters that um you know oh you know you should back off from her and give her space and then that causes that that drama right that misunderstanding yeah. yes, yes i yes. love those because misunderstanding, i love miscommunication I love that gut feeling whenever you're like, oh, that's so sad, you know, yeah. and, and then when they figure it out, you yeah. know, I love that. I think the the love stories where it's like love at first sight stuff is really boring to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I think that's probably why Romeo and Juliet um, is interesting for some people because this whole story is really not about them, you know, and their love at first sight, but because their love was so easy that everything did, else was everything so hard. else was yeah. hard exactly and so that's where they failed because they didn't know love how is hard. to communicate right exactly and that's love is work well and they were and, and romeo and juliet were very very young also right right well, it's so, not a romance no. and i, I know, I know I that know, y'all were thinking that think i was that gonna way. say romeo and juliet was the greatest love but a story. lot of people do because right, they, but they it's basically not, committed well, suicide yeah well that's committed. what i tell my students I, very I first thing say, is though, that it's not a love story there's <laughs> love stories and then there's romance and those right. to me yeah. are different because a love story is maybe a man whose father passed away and he's doing his father's dying wish. Right. Well, and that's mm-hmm. a that, different to kind me of love is a story. Love story too. That is. Yeah. And that and that's why I left this very open to being romance stories, but also the greatest love yeah. story. Yeah. Um and you know, uh like with the far pavilions, you know, this like I said, this is a very tragedy fraught story, um, you know, and for the the characters, their love is not easy, nor even immediately 
obvious um, because mm-hmm. they're they both go their own separate ways, which is often a uh, you know a a, a div- plot device. Is that the yeah. the right thing? Mm-hmm. Um, and my, the English teacher kind of helping me along here. <laughs> and, um, you know, so so they go their own separate ways. And then through chance, they are thrown together again many years later. And so and a realize, serendipity story. Yes. A serendipity, synchronicity, whatever you want to call it. And they're and they're also, um, you know, they realize that they're really good friends and they, they don't start out as lovers per se. They start out as friends and their, um, and their lives are kind of intertwined, you know, over time. And, and I think that in the, the tragedy and the overcoming the tragedy and, um, later in the book, um, escaping from some danger and, um, things like that, those are what, make that story really come alive for me and um really interesting and i i say that you know it is one of my favorite love stories but there's also a couple of others that um and and they're probably more well known but um more tragic in in perspective um one would be the Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough. Um, it's about a um, Australian priest who falls in love with a young girl on a um, a sheep station in the outback uh, when she's very young, and he's torn between his ambition to you know in the in the priesthood and his love for her. And that one also is one of those you know, separated, back together, separated, back together kind Sounds of thing. Sounds a lot like Scarlet Letter in some ways. Um, have you ever read Scarlet Letter? I have read the Scarlet Letter, and I, you know, that story breaks my heart because, um, you know, obviously they were in love. Yeah. But also, I, for me, I feel like the priest was a coward. It wasn't oh, just his ambition. Yeah. He was totally a coward. And left her to hang. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, basically, he left her flying out on the flagpole there. Um, you know, she she had, um, you know, she could either turn him over and mm-hmm. name him, which would ruin his career well, and would do her turned, no good. He kind of turned himself over in the end when he ripped his shirt open and he had the A scratched into his yeah, chest. Right, yeah. because he really was feeling for her. He loved her, but yeah. he wasn't willing you know, to give up his life as the right, priest right. to be with her. Yeah. Right. And that's, you know, in, in some ways the, the thorn birds is that way. And, um, and it's, it's a very sad, um, like I said, it's, it's a very tragic story. So, um, and another one that I, um, love have loved and, and I've read all three of these books multiple times just because, the they just the telling of the story is so great but um the other one that's one of my favorite books of all time is Shogun by James Clavell and most people uh a lot of people would look at it and think well that's not really a love story um but it is in a way um it was written um loosely based well maybe not even so loosely based on um William Adams, who was an explorer and trader in the in the sixteen hundred early sixteen hundreds, late fifteen hundreds, um, who uh, wound up in uh, I believe they actually did shipwreck in Japan. They were going to the, to Japan to trade. They uh, shipwrecked there and were captured by the Japanese, um, the the shogun, and. Um, the of the two there were only i think four or five survivors um he and his first mate i believe were not a, not ever allowed to leave japan they were kept there their whole lives and some of the other um people on their ship were allowed to to return home to um back to the netherlands to uh work out some trade deals you know but he actually was was kept there. He was a married man. He had children at home, 
but the samurai would not let him leave because the samurai actually valued his intelligence so much that he wanted to keep him as an advisor and he actually became um a, a western one of i think two people they've said that ever attained the status of samurai that came from anywhere but japan so um this story is actually loosely based on his story and um and the the actual uh story about samurai william is um documented in samurai william and i i did not look up i will link it on the heard it on the podcast but i've read that book as well um it, he did actually go on to remarry um in or you know the japanese equivalent of a marriage um in japan he had children in japan um and he just lived out his life he died at the age of 55 in japan uh this particular story um there's a little bit more of a romance there where he falls in love with the um a, the daughter of a shamed lord um who's already married and so there's there's some interesting things there because she's already married but she speaks multiple languages and so she is appointed to teach him how to speak japanese and um and so you know there's a love story that develops there and like i say it's all very tragic for you know none the least of which is that he never got to go home to his real family but um i think he actually came to love living in japan and and like i said he he had another whole family there as well but it is one of my favorite stories it and the thorn birds were both made into mini series that aired on television um and featured uh richard chamberlain as the lead actor so hmm. um and that was back in the probably 70s i think so um really good check it out um yeah i've heard of those but i and i remember my mom reading the thorn birds when i was little but uh and my grandma really liked it also but i have never seen or read it and and i've heard of shogun also but i didn't really know what it yeah. was about either but there i i just like those because they're like I say, that tragedy draws me in because it's mm -hmm. so sad. So um, one of my favorite uh, film directors is Zhang Yimou, which yes. is a Chinese film yes. director. And he, um, man, he can capture a, dra a tragedy. And um, <laughs> well, those are the movies that make you just bawl whenever you watch them because mm -hmm. they're, they never end happy. Um, but he has... Um, there's always some love interest in his stories. Um, House of Flying Daggers. I knew exactly where you <laughs> were going. Like, oh my god, I, you're I'm, going I'm there. I'm looking aren't at you. you. I like that, and I was sitting here thinking about that when you were talking about Shogun because I was just like, uh, what was that, movie? that was such Christian like a uh, that made me ball. Yeah, yeah oh, it yeah. was just like <laughs> yeah. one of those really sad, tragic uh -huh, love right. stories. And there's yes. another one um, that. I really like uh, by him, and I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's Judo. It's J U D O U. Um, it came out in the 90s. Okay. And uh, basically, this woman is married to this um, silk manufacturer, like a long time ago. Um, you know, very like manual process mm -hmm. of dyeing the silks. And um, he has a nephew who um, is, he's handicapped and um but he still you know works really hard and and the man who runs the silk factory i guess you could say he's infertile and his wife ends up like falling in love with his nephew and they have this long uh drawn out like forbidden love mm -hmm. and um i mean you want them to have this affair because her husband is like a wretched person and um they end up having a child together and like having the secret love like right under his roof you know right that was, that's mm. a really good story that will like rip your heart out yeah a lot a lot of um eastern cultures the the love story and well and i think a lot of that has to do with um uh, particularly like with japanese culture 
um, there was a time when there was really no um, concept of love, like that kind of love it, or love stories in their culture because um, they married out of necessity or out of convenience or, um, you know, the they the daughters were married off to to or made concubines of mm -hmm. um political figures or whatever you know so there was always something political or a need um you know a, a man's wife would die and so uh a farmer might marry his daughter off to someone else just to you know to provide for his family or whatever so um there's a lot of of that throughout history so those are our um poignant but but definitely very tragic love stories and there and there are love stories like that throughout time even um i mean dracula in some ways the not the version that you read in the book but you know if people <laughs> go through and tell about the you know his the reason he became a a vampire or the um uh, particularly the um interview with the vampire you know um yes he he became a vampire because he was grief stricken after his wife and children passed away so um you know there's a lot of things there that are love stories in disguise that mm -hmm. i don't know if, if that makes any sense yeah. so no no it totally does and so there's um there's all kinds of love stories i i want to ask you what about um Camelot because a lot of people look at the the Knights of the Round Table and King Arthur and mm -hmm. Guinevere oh, as their whole affair that is affair being well the, it really depends wisdom. on how you look at it because there are so many versions there are of, there are of that told and, and retold and retold so yes. like uh, there are versions that paint um you know Guinevere and um, Lancelot. Lancelot in a bad light. And then there are versions that, you know, you're very sympathetic of why Guinevere and Lancelot fell for each other. Right. It, yeah. And some of, some of the stories, they actually fell in love before she married Arthur because Lancelot yeah. was sent to retrieve her from her homeland to, in order to marry Arthur and in, then in some, she, you know, Arthur was an old man. And so she, mm -hmm. and, you know, so she fell yeah. in love with the younger man. And then in some stories, um, I'm trying to remember, was it the Mists of Avalon? Yes, where that's she, probably my favorite that's, version. That's probably one of, of my favorites too, but where he invited Lancelot into their bed because yeah. he knew that he was, or he was suspecting that he was infertile mm -hmm. and thought that if they had a tryst that she would, um, conceive and, and bring an heir and, and Lancelot was his most trusted and favorite knight. Yeah. So there, there is that. And then, you know, and then there's also the story of Morgana, um, who in some stories was, tricked into sleeping with him to produce mm -hmm. you know and then in some stories it was you know otherwise yeah but, so there's a lot of tragedy in that as well so some people think that's a, a great love story great tragic whatever you know because it in the end it led to arthur's demise so yeah one of my other favorite ones. Sorry, it's not a book again. <laughs> oh, I don't care. It doesn't I matter because I, I, I didn't limit it but, to well, that. Well, I mean, um, yeah, it's not really limited so, to it. So uh, one of my favorites is, uh, one of my favorite sci-fis is Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone really loves, um, oh, uh, what's his face? The Doctor. The the Tenth Doctor. Yeah. I, why why can't I think David of Tennant. David, David Tennant. Tennant. I'm yes. like, I should know his name. I know everyone loves their when you, story. When you say everyone Doctor Who, Doctor you Who automatically think yes, of David, David Tennant. That's the I one that sorry. everyone thinks of. So everyone loves the Doctor and Rose's story, but my favorite is actually Amy and Rory. Yes. And, I love that story. Um, and the reason why I love Amy and Rory is because Rory was always in love with Amy even before they even, were a thing, yes. you know, you know, and uh, he was just always there. 
and he was, he was like her. her best friend and um when they did you know get married and then they went on their little like honeymoon adventure basically with the doctor um and they had um a, actually a really long story because they were traveling through time and there were some incidents that happened without spoiling it obviously um rory ends up protecting amy um for over two thousand years yes and so he's called like the last centurion because he ends up becoming like this roman that's like kind of immortal in a sense and um a amy gets trapped in this cube and he guards her cube and um to me that was like that unconditional undying love that i loved right he would give about he them. gave his own life yeah to protect yeah. her yeah yeah yes. yeah even though she was just in a box like yeah. you know in your shogun story you know this guy he moves on and you know he accepts that he's not ever going to see his other family again and starts a new family rory could have accepted that amy was trapped in the box and that you know he mm -hmm. would have to move on but he chose not mm -hmm. to accept that and that's what i like about that because you can respect both of those choices right um, yes in both of those uh love stories uh but i just i felt well, like the way that they told that in story in the was. shogun the love story is not with him and his wife in england actually right it's, it's the new love that's it, right yeah. and and i think part of that was the um the realization you know that he was never going to get to go back home ever yeah, you know yeah. and but um Let's but no like I, I do get that kind of like a yeah. outlander like um yes yes she exactly. uh, falls in love accept. with jamie mm -hmm. even though she has a husband back home yes. but and she, she loved him right you know, yeah, she so loved much. her yeah. husband but then but then because he looked so much like um that the person bad, who had tried yeah, to rape her guy, yeah and yeah and who had raped jamie yeah um she she could not yeah, it was different. Like, it was, yeah, yes. you really, she really couldn't. And um, that is probably, like, Claire and Jamie, that's probably another one of my favorite love I, stories. I love that one, too. Like, um, um, I just, um, it's it's one of those, like, heart-bursting things, like, you want them to get together, and then they, you know, they're thrown together and forced to marry, and she's just like, no, but then... They fall in she love anyway. Yeah, then yeah. She, they yeah. start falling in love anyway, and that's just, um, that's very a power, that's really a powerful, emotional I, um, type Have Have you show watched also. further in the season with, with Brianna and... I have not gotten okay. that far yet. Ooh. Yeah, we can't. Spoil we can't. No spoil. Yeah, I no spoil. spoil. I know. Oh I know who so, Brianna is. Yes. So but I haven't like uh, uh, gotten that. Part I just yet. think even that story is yes. even more enthralling to me than Claire's story because that is one of those ones where something just, divides them, and then there's that misunderstanding. Yes. Yeah. That yes. separates them. Yes. And he goes through the ringer to get to her. Yes. That yes. I love. Like, yes. Th that's yes. the part that I love. And it's also that same gut-wrenching because they had this, like, where they didn't see eye to eye. And it wasn't even – they just – one person was it's always when you assume it well it, it is. always is yes. when you assume yeah. the other person's feelings that's yes. when you're stupid yes in, in those stories and and because you are the reader or the viewer you you see, see both, sides, both sides yes and you're just like no 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 don't do it and then something happens they get yes. separated and yes. you're just like oh my god so the whole time yes. you're just like come on you can do it yes you know yes get back to her you know? yes yeah so it it is it's um it's gut-wrenching it's it's mm -hmm. i don't know and i i think the tragedy parts of it is what makes us um drawn to it because we see that if they can go through all of that then our love should be really Easy. Easy, right? Because right. yeah. no one wants to go through what those people have to go right. through to get right. to be with the person that they, the, love. That they love. No right. one would want that yes. to happen to themselves, yes. but we want that love. 
So yeah. another interesting story, and, um, and I'm trying to remember also who wrote it. Uh, Quo, you'll have to correct my Latin here, Quo Vadis. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, which is um, in a way a love story, but in a way not a love story. I, often my love stories that I love are not written as a love story. Right. They are written as a dramatic story or whatever, and there's a love component well, to it. Well, I love the love components in the dramatic stories. Those yes. are my favorite yes. types of stories. It doesn't necessarily, it could be a horror movie, but oh, if there's exactly. like some kind of love yes. where two people fall for each other, even if it's the most obscure people, then mm -hmm. I'm all about it. Yeah, Ooh, and, the, and, and this one, um, <laughs> it's a set in the... Uh, early Christianity, um, after Christ is crucified, but as as Christianity is moving through the Roman Empire, and um, there's a I can't remember if he's a centurion or a you know he's he's some kind of in the military, and um, he winds up falling in love with a Christian girl who is the daughter of a king from another country that was. Um, co-opted into the Roman empire, you know, and she's, she's basically a hostage there being raised, um, by another Roman family and he falls in love with her. Um, and she doesn't want anything to do with him because he's not a Christian. And it, it kind of, the story follows his transition, um, into Christianity because of his love for her. And then later on, the um, perils that they faced as Christians um, in the time of Nero, where Christians were being martyred left and right. And so um, it, it's a very sweet story also, but also very horrifying. Um, and, and I just thought that was kind of good. And there's some like little side love stories that went along on along with that. Um, you know, as there often are in good literature, there's multiple storylines going on and things like that. And I, I loved those. I did. Yeah. And sometimes, oftentimes, like the side story where two different people fall in love, that's also sometimes a more interesting story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So probably... Okay. And I was uh, sitting here thinking of teen novels. This isn't really a teen novel. And um, it's it was a very interesting novel to me when I read it. A lot of people give this author, um, they say it's a bad book or whatever that this author can't write. And she's not the greatest writer, but, you know, she is a multimillionaire now. Uh, it's uh, Stephanie oh, Meyer. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you were going. Yeah, no, right. I knew you were going. No, there. no, yeah. I'm not going Twilight with this. But she wrote another <laughs> lesser-known novel that they made a kind of not great movie out of called The Host. I've heard of that. I have not read it. And yeah. um, what I like about The Host is that it's um, it's not very, it's not really a conventional love story. It's a, uh, and the host is about uh, an alien race that takes over the earth and they take over the bodies of humans and they become hosts. And um, there are these patches of humans that are hiding underground trying to, you know, take their bodies back and stuff like that. And it's about uh, this one girl that gets captured. Her name's Melanie. And, um, she, uh, a, they put a host in her body and Melanie doesn't completely go away like m all of the other humans inside the body. Mm. I guess, um, I think the hosts are called souls. They put them inside the body and then they take over that human body or whatever body is mm -hmm. on the planet. So the that body they take is over. not the host? The body is the host. Yeah, the body the is body the is host. The host. Oh, okay, because yeah. the then, way you were describing yeah, it, I was okay, like, I'm, wait, I'm how doing is bad the alien the host if no, the body no. is... <laughs> so <laughs> Melanie, the so yeah, so the soul is at, the soul was added, and Melanie is the host, and then there was a soul added inside her, but Melanie didn't go away, so it's both of them occupied inside one body. Mm -hmm. And so... 
the host is having Melanie's memories and everything like that. So she runs away from all of the other souls in the city and everything and ends up in the desert and she's captured by a patch of humans and they're wanting to kill her but then they realize that Melanie is still inside the body so they let her live amongst them and they are having kind of like this dual citizenship of the body mm. and uh, so and Melanie's boyfriend which is one part of the love story, and her little brother are hiding out in that community. And so they reconnected, and then the soul falls in love with another guy mm. in the community. So it's like a love quadrangle. Oh, boy. <laughs> and it's like uh, one, it's, you know, it's like two girls in one body and then like two guys. And so it's just very interesting. And I always thought that that was a really interesting love story because the parts between all four characters are just so sweet, especially how um, the soul falls in love with the other guy. It's just, uh, it's so very unexpected. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell the ending of it. Y'all, no, y'all don't, are gonna don't tell it. anymore yeah, because so, like, there I'm might be people anymore. who want to read it. Yeah. yeah so. And so it's really interesting. Yeah. And if you watch the movie and you were like, well, that book probably sucks. No, um, the book, the book is way better than the movie. The mm -hmm. movie's not horrible, but they could have done so many other things. Right. Right. Well, that happens a lot in books and yeah. movies, so, yeah. But, no, I wasn't going to go there with Twilight, which is just an <laughs> offshoot of Romeo and Juliet anyway, and uh, <laughs> Team Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you? Anything else? Oh, no. I mean, I like I said, you know, I've read, like, a million romance novels, but I, I could not tell you one of them that would stand out, you know, that's, like, uh -huh. my favorite I like them all, I guess, equally, I guess. There's not. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm just going to throw this out there. The, you know, this is the cliche one, you know, we were, that I was not going to talk about. But, you know, I was looking online at uh, Oprah's all-time favorite romances. Mm -hmm. And number one is Pride and Prejudice. <gasps> oh, okay. Uh, and, yeah. and and you know I ha that as an English teacher I have a soft spot in my heart for Pride and Prejudice, and I know that is the most cliche thing that every girl not every girl but likes Pride and Prejudice, but you have to it, admit it's a pretty what, good it, story. It's, it's a pretty great story. I do love that story, and it's probably the first time that I realized that I loved romance love stories where they assume. Yeah. What mm -hmm. the other person is yeah. thinking. They and think you... they know everything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And maybe yes. that's because I'm like that and I can totally relate to those characters. Because, like, I physically, like, my stomach hurts when I read those stories. Oh, like, yeah. I physically feel that gut wrench. Well, it's like you know they like each other. Well, and but that's they're one of the too things. Stubborn to yes, admit that's one it. of the things. Stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, those I, are yeah. my favorites, definitely. Well, there's there's definitely a ton of those out there too. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's like there's so many different stories, and I I really was hoping I could. Well, off you the, know, Jane you know. Austen is the love story OG. <laughs> all all the other ones are just kind of copied after her. Well, well not all of them, but <laughs> there's a lot of love stories out there. Um, why don't you listeners uh, fill us in on what your favorite greatest love story is? Um, we're open to hearing the answer to that. Yeah, and if and, you have any book recommendations, oh, please yeah. drop them. Or drop movies. Them and Amber, Movie, to answer yeah. your question, my first favorite love story was actually probably Laura Ingalls Wilder. I forget With, the name uh, of that one, where she married yeah, where her she, husband. Yes, I love that um, book. The, I was not the first like four years, was it? 15 or These so. happy golden years, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. 
I'm not sure. I can't yeah. remember, but it's one oh, yeah. of the later books in the yeah. series. And when she like, actually she's a meets teacher, her and husband, he's given her rides he, on the yes, sleigh. He, he so comes to rescue probably her, yeah. one of. Let's see. I'm trying to think of like when I was a kid. Like one of the ones that I just kind of fell in love with when I was a kid. Um, but, you know, I, it would have to be um, The Secret Circle uh, by L.J. Smith. Like a L.J. Smith book. Uh, if you don't know who L.J. Smith is, she wrote, originally wrote The Vampire Diaries. Okay. But um, probably she wrote a lesser known series called The Secret Circle about witches. And um, there, and it was an unexpected love story about the main character, Cassie, who, whose mother drags her back to her hometown. And uh, she uh, moves in, they move in with her grandmother, and uh, she meets, uh, but right before, like on their way, she meets a guy walking on the beach. And he's actually a witch, and he's being chased by witch hunters. Ooh. And she saves his life, and he gives her a crystal in return. And she kind of just falls for him a little bit or likes him right then and there. And she's like, well, I'm never going to see this guy ever again. And then she goes, and then they make it to their destination, which is Salem, and she goes to her um new high school and you know she runs into him and hmm, it just so happens like to Greece. be yeah <laughs> yeah it is kind of like yeah it's it Greece. is kind of like that yeah <laughs> yeah that's a I, cute I, love what story you, also <laughs> well see and i think people a lot of people think that that's a cute love story i i don't know i'm a little bit disappointed in it because she had to give up who she was and become someone else. Yeah, true. For him well, to in, accept her. In the book, it was like um, she had um, made like a friend on her first day of school. Mm -hmm. And they had become really good friends. And the guy doesn't show back up until later. Because mm. like I said, he's running from the witch hunters. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like uh, she made Greece. best. That's not. Yeah, Greece. no. Yeah. Was like... She made best friends with. She made best friends like, with uh, with this girl, and it turns out that that guy was actually like her boyfriend. Oh. So that that's where the unexpected, like uh, yeah. all these obstacles oh, yeah. come into play. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, back to Greece. No, I was just thinking that you know because I I don't think of that as a love story because. Um, you know, he did try to change for her, but he, she ultimately changed everything she for changed him. Everything yeah. for him. They never met in the middle. And I think that's what frustrates me with it is well, Grease two is it. better than Grease one anyway. Well, I, I never saw it. that one, but I, I um, said it. Yeah. <laughs> better music. But, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any others like that, that are gone with the wind. <sighs> You know, yeah, see that's see that's another one is I that he so. loved her, her so much and she would, followed after that Ashley guy and yeah. that's what made me so mad about that whole right, thing. Right. Because he did. He loved her. Rhett Butler loved It's a one-sided. Yeah, it was one-sided. Very like she one eventually married him or whatever, but but only because he was the backup. Yeah. yeah. And um and there and if you've ever read Scarlet, there's a little bit of other thing, you know, she she shamed herself by her actions and, and as she moved on and you know, after the book and everything, she she realized her mistakes and everything. So uh the book Scarlet is uh a little bit more redeeming mm -hmm. uh, of her, but um but yeah, I was just like Oh man, quit dogging after that guy. He he already told you a long time ago he wasn't interested in you and you pretty much near wrecked his relationship. So, you know, women <laughs> they always fall for the wrong well, guys. Sounds like a teenage girl. Well, she was. Yeah, she, she was. was. And she was. I know, yeah. Of it. She pining was a after literal that one guy. Girl she problem. literally was a teenage girl pining after uh 
And he was getting married to another girl. Like, he yeah. was going to get married to another girl. Right. And he told her yeah. the whole time, I am marrying this but girl. But she was in I love with love him love before you. he married her. So, you know. It's, yeah. Yeah. She just got this thing in her head that it was. It was him It was him or and nobody. He must, him or he nobody. must love her. He must really love her. Why wouldn't he love her? And, you know. And Melanie, her her rival, um, was kind of weak and, but I mean, she saw her as weak and not. She wasn't or, though. She wasn't. No, she was very strong. And, and she very knew that kind. Scarlett was in love with her the whole time. But she loved him. She loved Scarlett anyway. And, um, yeah, that they became kind of really was, good friends. Yeah. And that kind of shows what kind of good person that she was. But, um, but yeah, that's a, that's another one of those stories. A lot of people look at it as this. It, it, but it's not really. It, I mean, it is a love story, but it's that's like you said, I mean. it's, it's very it's a one-sided. one-sided love story. That's, yes, there's and there's a lot of those out there as yeah, well. That unrequited love, and then the love of another thing other than like your significant other kind of loves. Like yes, you know the um, man traveling across the world to fulfill like his dad's dying wish. Right. Those right. kind of love stories well, too. And those part of part of sh- of Scarlett's love was the love for Tara. That was her father's dream because mm-hmm. he was an Irish immigrant and he built this um, estate. And then, you know, post-war, you know, it, it, it was a lot of the thing was her love and trying to resuscitate that, that estate, you know, um, post, post bellum. Is that how you say that? Um, but yeah, you know, they, um, after the Civil War, you know, trying to... Antebellum. Re- no, antebellum is before. Oh, my bad. So, um, so yeah, it was an antebellum estate. And then, you know, them coming back to try to... Or her trying to revive it, at you know, be- when she realized that that was all she had. So, um, I think that was a, a good one. Um, and there's there's a lot of little stories that I read... When I was younger and I could not even begin to tell you the names of them or anything, you know, um, pioneers that moved out west and, you know, those kind of stories. Um, There was usually some good romance uh, or romantic love stories out of those, too, because it took a special kind of um, love and acceptance to just pick up your life and move like that uh, to a strange strange new place so any any other comments stories no okay well as i was saying before um i invite you to um comment on our facebook chat page mmc chat you can access it from our modern musings facebook page there's also a link on our website at www.modernmusings.net where you can also read our blogs and we'll probably have a um some blogs about more love stories on there (laughs) yeah probably um, we'll think of everything after we sign off you know we'll think of all the yeah we'll think of all the love stories that we didn't want to or that that we we forgot yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so um let us know what your greatest love stories are um you know is it is it a fiction? Is it something in your family? Um, maybe there's some of those kind of stories out there. I'd love to hear those. I'm sure Amber and Kristen would love to hear those too. So of course, um, of course. give us a share and um, we'll be here next week. Oh, wait. Um, before we part, though. <laughs> yes. Um, um, my I'm hosting next week. Yes. And what are, are you? Yes. Women oh. and STEM. We're oh, going to be talking right. about... Uh, we're going to be talking about women and STEM, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the hidden movie, figures. Hidden, hidden figures. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so, I lost my brain for a second. Yes, and um, and then uh, we also need to thank Red Door Studios and Creative Audio Tech for our audio and equipment. And um, that's it. We'll be back next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.